so this video is just going to be kind of like a walkthrough, kind of like the initial, uh, you know, checking over this uh, travel trailer we just purchased. It is a 2014 Keystone Cougar 30 FKV. So uh, basically 30 is kind of the length. It's more like a 35, maybe 37, I think is the way that NADA shows it because of the tongue uh, length and all that. But anyways, that's besides the point. It's like a Vino's travel trailer. Uh, we just got this. Um, and uh, it's used, obviously, it's a 2014. And so I'm just kind of going over everything on it. And, you know, hopefully some people can kind of find it useful, see the kind of things that I'm checking and looking at. And, you know, if you're thinking about buying a used camper, you might want to try looking at some of these things. There's also some other good videos about inspecting an RV. I'm not going to get into that kind of detail. This is just kind of like a first person view from my perspective, what I'm going through. And uh, there'll be some more videos to come as time goes on. Is it cooler in here this time? Yeah. Good. I feel like we can really look at it. Yeah. This cabinet's huge. And it opens on the other side too. Oh, like this door comes all the way across? Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> cabinets are large as well. Is that, oh, is it kind of like? It's like a roll top desk, but it's like a weirdly shaped little space, which is kind of cool. Yeah, if we ever want to paint these cabinets, that'll be a problem, I think, but. Dude, I could fit my whole body in that cabinet, <laughs> and it extends this way, too. But see, my worry is with that kind of stuff, they get trapped. You know, things get trapped in the corners. Oh, no, I think it'll be fine. Oh, and there's a little shelf under there. Oh, good. And it goes all the way across. Wow, that's pretty big. Yeah, that's really nice. Really nice. <clears throat> Little bitty oven, but that's okay. Yeah, you can still fit a, a pizza in there. Yeah, Little bitty microwave. No, that's normal. That's like the other one that I have. <clears throat> Smaller than the one we have at home. Yeah, oh yeah. I wish this had the type of stove where it had like a piece of glass that flipped down over it. Oh, it's kind of chilly in here. Is it? Oh yeah. Somebody's keys. Yikes. Those probably those are probably the keys to the camper. It's a lot of keys. I wonder, huh? Wonder why it's cold. Maybe it's just super well sealed. It does have gas, which yeah. is nice. Look at that. Just big drawers. Yeah. It's the only drawer, so the rest of it's all cabinets. Yeah, which I kind of like. And then there's the storage under, but this is what I was talking about. You see the like animal, animal hair? hair. Yeah. yeah. You can get any chairs you want though. That chair is broken. It's like got a bend in the in the back. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just split. But yeah, and then that, you can flip up the table if you wanted. Yeah. Somehow. It's okay. Couch is a little beat, but not That's terrible. Because okay, we can replace it with the leather one. Yeah. The love seat that we already have. These little cabinets are kind of small, but what's this? That's probably the electrical panel, if I had to guess. Yeah, I think so. You just pull it up. I wouldn't do it now. It would make it hot in here. I just want to make sure that it works. I'm sure it does. The ones in the trailer that we stayed in before were kind of iffy. Yeah. The screw kept coming out. Uh, I don't know what that. Oh, I guess it's just the thing to keep it in track. Yeah, but it makes it when you try to pull it up and the screw's not secure, it like bunches up and makes it really hard. Mm. These cabinets are nice. Yeah. It's got the little slidey door. Yeah, it does. You can't, like, walk. The shower is large. Yeah, but it's kind of short. I need to put my head in that little skylight. Stand up. The, <laughs> the sprayer's here. I'll have to, like, be in here like this to get my hair wet. That's okay. You don't wash your hair very often. Shut up. <laughs> little coat yeah. hangers. Little towel hangers, I guess. 
that cabinet's deep. Goes all the way to the end. No medicine cabinet. Here. These guys are all connected. Yep. Which is cool. And this guy is literally this whole space. Yeah. And there's little outlets under here. Oh, there are? Like yeah. in the ceiling? Oh, for know. the TV. What is this? With more cigarette lighter plugs and USB. These drawers are deep. Yeah. And all three of these cabinets are connected. Mm-hmm. So this whole thing's basically hollow, which is nice. I can't remember if this one had a washer dryer hookup in it. For some reason, I think it did. No. What's at the bottom there? There's a bunch of pipes down there. Oh, well, I don't know. I bet it wouldn't be hard to get a washer dryer hooked up in there, but I don't know if you'd be able to fit it. Well, it would certainly take up space. Be worth it. Wouldn't need to carry as much clothes there if you could wash There are not outlets. There aren't? No. Huh. Well, it's got a light here. So you probably could rig something up if you had to. This is a concern, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. I think that that's minor, all things considered. Okay, so we had this thing plugged in for a good while. Over here in this outdoor outlet, we converted from 15 amp to 30. Ran over here and it worked good for a day. And then we were working in it and it threw the breaker or something but I can't find the breaker that it goes to it must have a sub panel somewhere so I'm gonna have to crawl around under the house looking for it because I can't get power to the outlet all of a sudden in the meantime we were running off of battery power just kind of doing our thing in there couldn't run the AC or anything and it quickly ran out so I pulled the battery out you can see sides of the battery are bulged quite a bit I looked at the battery before we took this and I knew it was older but uh didn't see this bulging but now that it had been charging I guess it uh began to do that <coughs> luckily it's not a big concern because I happen to actually have two batteries one of them is a solar battery the other one's just a deep cycle marine I had them wired together before to run just a temporary solar setup for a project I was doing and they work fine so I'm going to try it this way. Alright so I already had these wires from the other project I did so I just have to take them apart and repurpose them a little bit. Let's see if I got the right size wrenches up. So what I have to do is I have to connect jumper cable across two batteries so the camper will be hooked to this deep cycle marine battery and then this deep cycle marine battery will be almost like when you jump your car you know you have positive to positive same idea here so that's what we're doing i'm sure some people are going to say oh you shouldn't mix battery brands but they're both the same type of battery they're both uh, what are they lead acids these jumper wires are incredibly expensive for what they are if you're ever looking to uh, to do this my suggestion would be to make your own it's not what I've done here because at the time I was in a rush but if you try to buy these battery cables I think each one is like $20 at the store where you could go and buy a roll of the wire much cheaper and then just crimp your own ends onto it. Of course, you know, when you do that, it's not going to be quite as nice. Now, when you go to your inverter on the positive side, you always need to use one of these fuses. This is a, what, 175 amps. That's plenty of fuse for this job. The idea is, is if something happens, you know, you get an over current to the inverter, you don't want to start a fire. You want that fuse to blow first. Just a 
little tip there. Not that I've ever had something like that happen, but you never know. I never had quite as much load attached to the system as I think we're gonna have here. You know, I ran power tools and a box fan. Now I'm looking to run a uh, 15,000 BTU rooftop AC on it and all the lights, so I don't know. I've only got 100, 100 watt solar panel. I'm probably gonna need to expand that to keep my batteries charged, but we'll see. And we're also gonna probably want more batteries probably get rid of this uh, this uh, deep cycle marine battery and get two like multiple of these Renogy batteries it's a little bit nicer battery than this and I'll, I actually think it's cheaper but of course you gotta buy it on Amazon <coughs> I just think that's a better battery I had this tray here but I couldn't fit two batteries in the tray Okay, so I'm in the bedroom, which is in the back of the coach, and we already have two batteries in it, relatively new batteries in it, uh, wired in parallel. Now what I want to do is be able to run the 30 amp service um, off of the batteries, and then I'm going to recharge the batteries with a solar panel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find some way to connect an inverter. So in the bedroom back here, there's this big wardrobe and in those three spots, there are these drawers which I've taken out so I can kind of see. And if you look down inside of the drawer, this plastic bin is where the batteries are. So the batteries are under here. You can see the positive and negative cable coming up through, so on and so forth. It was just getting to be too much work to try and hold a camera and tools and everything all at the same time. So, <clears throat> take this drawer out and then the inverter is down in this hole. This how you turn on everything. Now in the future, I'm gonna go ahead and wire a plug onto the back wall, but I don't really feel like I have everything I wanna have to put that plug on there. So for the time being, I'm just gonna leave this the way it is. I wanna make sure I really seal up my hole where my outlet is really well. And uh, so I got some stuff on order from Amazon to do that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is really check the condition of the tires and the bearings. Make sure these axles are safe. Um, you know, your axle bearings are really just a general maintenance item. This is a 2014 model trailer, so, you know, stuff like that really just depends on the previous owners. The tires, I can tell from the production date that these tires are probably original to the coach because when you look at tires, there's a date stamped on the side of the tire, and all of them have a production date, meaning the day that they're manufactured, the week really, of 2013. This particular tire, the production date is the 40th week, so the first two numbers are the week, so 40th week of 2013. So towards the end of 2013, going into 2014, there's only 52 weeks in a year, obviously. Now, in order to check the bearings, I have this thing unhooked from the truck, all jacked up. I'm just gonna take a jack, find a safe place under the axle. Now you don't want to jack it up from the middle of the axle because these are not meant to take stress there. I really want to get it as far outside on the axle as I can. <clears throat> and see, I have it lifted up enough to spin the tire. So what we're going to do is just kind of shake this around. So just a very, very slight amount of clunking, but nothing crazy and i'm not sure this one so some axles you can grease the bearings from a zerk fitting on the end of the axle and usually when you have that you, they'll have like a rubber cap in the center that you pull back and use a zerk fitting this one doesn't have that 
uh, at least not obviously. I might have to take the wheel off to do that, but for the time being, there doesn't seem to be anything here it's raising too much alarm. It does have a little bit of play in it, but nothing more than I would normally expect on a trailer. Um, you, know, you don't want these too tight because when the bearings are too tight, they get real hot and then that'll cause premature wear. I feel pretty confident here. So I'm gonna drop this down. I don't have any that are worn out, but like I said, if you have like a lot of plate like this, I would tighten it up a little bit, but it's not something unsafe for the road at all. You know, this is probably, if you jacked up any trailer at a dealership that's uh, gone any amount of miles, you would find that much play in it. Um, I feel pretty confident there. I probably will do a bearing service before I go on a long trip, but that's just general maintenance stuff. There's nothing to be alarmed about here. Um, not all RVs, you can just walk on the roof willy-nilly. You do have to be mindful of that. Uh, good indication that your roof is safe to walk on is if you have a ladder on there. They don't typically put ladders on RVs that don't have a full walk-on roof. So this one I know has a full walk-on roof. So I'm gonna go ahead and climb up there. Sorry if it's a little noisy up here, but what I'm looking for is anywhere where the roof could leak. So this has a rubber membrane to cover the roof. So kind of like your house has shingles, RVs have this rubber membrane. And then that membrane is sealed with a type of caulking. They call it a lap sealant. And it's made by a company called Dicor. So I'm looking for anywhere where that uh, needs attention such as right here you can see there's some sealant missing here so I could probably go ahead and just add some there it looks like it's in good shape otherwise not a whole lot missing there and uh, this particular one doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a roof that is uh, flat so something to keep in mind something I just noticed here so when we were looking at this, the uh, antenna was down. I never really thought of it. And then I tried to raise it the other day and uh, it didn't raise. And now that I'm up here, I see why. It's, uh, it's broken. So we have a broken antenna. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I don't really care to replace it, to be honest. Um, but it is annoying that it's broken. You know, we're not really in uh, regular TV watchers anyways. But yeah, so normally it would be like this. This one's broken. And the real problem with having it broken is now it just kind of flops. And I don't want it to cause any damage. So what I'm gonna do while I'm up here, I'm gonna look for a way to disconnect this thing. So at least, it's not gonna cause any damage. You know, stuff like this can happen if somebody ever left the uh, antenna up when they left their site. And it's not terribly complicated to take apart. I'm just gonna take out this coaxial cable and I'll pull this pin here. You know, I'm also gonna look at the slides. I don't know if I can just walk on these slides. Some you can, some you can't. So I'm not gonna just jump on it and start walking on it, but I'm just looking for any damage or anything, any rips in this uh, roof membrane, anything like that. There are some wrinkles here. I don't think that that's too big of a deal. So, just keep looking around. So yeah, I know what I need to do up here. I need to pull that antenna down. It has to get replaced with something else if I wanna use the TV, I imagine. Also while I'm here, I'm gonna double check the production date on this spare tire, just in case I ever need to use it. So the spare tire is also original to the camper. It has a production date of the 39th week of 2013. It's the same brand, it's just probably what came with it. This thing probably had a cover on it, that's why it's in really nice shape. And I may try to put a cover on it again, just to keep it nice. Cause that looks like a brand new tire. I'm just kind of coming around here. I'm gonna look at the suspension. There's not really a whole lot to say about it, you know. This has a more ride uh, Cree 3000 suspend, uh, equalizer on it. So not a whole lot of maintenance can be done. It doesn't have uh, greasable bolts. 
call them wet bolts or anything like that. So not really much I can do. Um, it's a little uh, bee's nest in there. So I'm gonna try and get rid of that. One thing I've noticed is the wire to the slide when I'm driving it down the road is hanging down. And that's actually a really simple fix. I'll show you here. So if you ever see wires hanging down, you don't want to leave it like that because you know, it could catch on something going in and out of a park or, you know, just driving down the road. This spring exists solely to hold up that wire and they hold it up with zip ties. This one apparently is missing a zip tie. It looks like it actually has something here. I guess it's just a branch that it caught on. So I'll just uh, zip tie this back. So that way, because basically when the slide is closed, this uh, spring keeps it all held up. So. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. That should be good. Somebody put a piece of duct tape here and I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so it says rack and pinion slides on it. So they're pretty low maintenance, you know, pretty simple system. They just have an electric motor which moves the slides in and out on the gears, as you can see back there. It's not anything crazy complex like a uh, cable system. Some. A uh, dealer was trying to tell me when we were looking at RVs, they were trying to sell me a, uh, a, a camper with cable slides. And I said, well, I don't really like cable slides. It seems like a point of failure that's completely unnecessary. And they were swearing up and down how they're so reliable, how they're so great, and all, all this crap. And, like, honestly, cable slides are cheap, and they absolutely can break, and they have a complex cable routing that makes them so that they move in and out. Now, you know, maybe somebody that knows more than me can say, oh, well, cable's better or not, but uh, I don't buy it. <laughs> you know, I, I prefer to have, you know, obviously rack and pinion is a lot more robust. So while it might be a little harder to work on if it breaks, because if you think about it, if you break a rack like that, you know, if you if you snap a tooth off, something like that, and, and I have seen that, I actually, did some work uh, for a customer that had an RV with a rack slide like this and they broke us uh, they basically had wore out a section of teeth so their slide wouldn't go in once it got to that section right um, you know if that happens to you you're gonna have to replace those teeth somehow and the way I did it was there's a section of the teeth that never actually uh, are used like they never mesh so I ended up cutting that section out the the bald section out and then cutting off the extra that never gets used and then welding that section into where i'd cut out and it works perfect i actually heard from him not too long ago you said that uh he said that it was working good so i have some experience working on these there is some adjustment that can be made but usually once they're initially set up you never have to mess with them again because this arm here keeps it in line you see the threads on the other side and, you know, getting that set up initially might be difficult, or if you ever have to adjust it, that is difficult, but um, it, it's a lot less often. You know, yeah, you could replace a cable pretty cheap uh, as far as parts go, and, and you know, anybody could do it, but it's very fickle. It's, a, it's, not, a, uh, it's not a thing that's going to accept much tolerance, and, and that's my concern with anything like that. Um, Schwintech makes a nice uh, slide system as well that go like on the side of the wall uh, of your slide so it's a lot cleaner of a setup but they're more expensive. Um, I think the rack slide if you're looking for something that's not too expensive and is easy to maintain I think that this is the way to go if you can get it. Um, not saying that cable slides are terrible uh, it just you know I, I don't trust them so I'm not gonna I wouldn't uh, pick it if I had another choice. And another thing that I've noticed is this stabilizer jack has a little bit of a lean to it. I don't know if you can see it on camera. And the reason why it has this lean is this bracket here seems to be bent. So what I will do is I'm going to try to bend it back where it goes and I'm gonna go ahead and weld it. It only has uh, a couple of, let's see here. Hopefully you can see this. It only has a couple of self-tapping. It has a self-tapping screw here, and then it has a regular bolt here. So my thinking is, is this has been hit at one time they tried to fix it, uh, but it bent the whole bracket. And it looks like there's a couple extra holes you could bolt to, but I think, you know, it's kind of hard for me to decide because in the future, if I want like an electric power uh, stabilizer, 
you know, if I weld this on, I'm gonna have to cut it back off. But uh, it's not something I plan on doing anytime soon. They're like $500. And uh, having this fix will make this thing feel a lot more stable. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll probably lift this up, get it bent in as well as I can, slam it with a hammer, all that nonsense, and get it straight. And then I'm going to take my welder, and I'm going to go ahead and run a bead right through here. And this thing's going to be a lot more sturdy. Because uh, I've been looking at this for the past couple days from a distance thinking, geez, that looks, that looks uh, awful crooked. So... Kind of, this is why it's good, you know, when it's hot out, you never want to sit and then look at your problems and, you know, you just want to get out of the heat. But right now it's super comfortable compared to the last few days. So pretty happy about that. So. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe for more. I'll catch everybody in the next one.